welcome back to Bay Area Focus. We are highlighting a Napa location that really has it all. Incredible wines, mouth-watering food, laid-back atmosphere, and two owners that are among the best in the business, Ryan Stettens and Matt Stamp, opened up Compline in September, and they haven't looked back. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Hi. All right, so tell us about Compline. What's the concept behind this place? Uh, it's, it's a new wine bar in the heart of downtown Napa. Uh, full restaurant, as you mentioned, uh, and, and really a wine experience. We have a retail shop that's small and geared for local traffic, uh, and we're offering educational classes uh, almost every day of the week. All right, so tell us a little bit about the wines that uh, you brought here today. Let's start off with uh, this one to my right. So on the right-hand side, we have uh, um, an international sparkling wine. Uh, we, we definitely do celebrate the local wines of Napa and Sonoma, but in this case, a wine coming from the Loire Valley, uh, specifically in the village of Ouvray. This is the Francois Chidain Petiant, 100% uh, Chenin Blanc, um, very, very racy, li lightly effervescent, and is... Uh, uh, really uh, spot on pairing with uh, basically any of our bar snacks at Compline. Uh, nice full body uh, style of sparkling wine with chamomile and fresh, fresh yellow apple, but uh, very, uh, very kind of intriguing and, and yeah. textural as well. No, it's fascinating. Uh, tell us about the menu there. Well, uh, the menu itself uh, 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 being run by our chef, Chef Yancey Winsberger, a gentleman who uh, has quite the uh, the, the the resume behind him we've um, see, seen his uh, seen his career grow with us as well um, he's uh, worked everywhere from uh, opening a restaurant in uh, in downtown Napa to uh, working a grill in Burma uh, his his uh, menu is just as diverse as his uh, his experience has been with uh, flavors reaching from around the world while celebrating uh, the local fare that we have uh, sourcing ingredients from Napa and Sonoma uh, with our farmers and our uh, there we go. Our, yeah. Our, what is what are we taking a look at uh, here? Those are Which, our, what dish is this? Our lamb meatballs with with uh, Harissa and Duca. Yeah, it's been a big hit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so lamb meatball. Lamb meatball okay. with Harissa and Duca. Harissa being a, a lightly spicy tomato-based sauce, and then Duca is uh, the the crumble of the top with the sesame. We so, actually we actually get that lamb from Don Watson, who's a local. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, farmer uh, raises uh, 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 lambs in Napa Valley, and they're, they're used as lawnmowers, essentially, in the vineyards. Yeah, so they'll, yeah. they'll go between the rows, and they'll cut down on the covered crop and grasses and feed themselves that way, and then eventually they come in our back door. So. Tell us about uh, one of your favorites, some, some of the other dishes uh, at the restaurant, and also we'll, we'll try to talk about this wine as well when you talk about that. For sure. Uh, one of the things I think we do really well is uh, whole fish. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we uh, get in whatever, you know, fresh catch we can find, uh, and we cook it whole. Uh, chef alternates between a kind of a salt baked preparation. Sometimes he'll grill it. Uh, and I think it's awesome with this second wine. This is uh, one of our local favorites uh, from winemaker Dan Petrowski. It's the Masakan 2016 Sauvignon Blanc, uh, all fruit from the uh, Pope Valley uh, in Napa, just kind of to our east. And I love it. It's, you know, it's grassy. It's kind of citrus scented. It's uh, sharp. It's light. It's beautiful for fish. So it goes with fish. Does it go with poultry as well? Yeah, lighter okay. preparations for sure. All right. What about the the red wine that we have here on the on my left, far left? So this is the um, Mathiasen Pinot Meunier, um, uh, a wine that really shows the diversity of red wine. Uh, with our menu, Chef Yancey is uh, charged with the, uh, the 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 challenge to take every dish and have it be wine friendly and span mm -hmm. the menu. We're not pairing any one specific wine with any one dish, but saying that this. Pinot Meunier can, um, can cross the borders. It can go well with some of our lighter fish and, uh, and poultry preparations all the way to our pork and lamb preparations that are on the menu. Uh, this is um, coming from Jill and Steve Mathias and great friends of both Matt and I. Uh, um, Steve, Steve uh, tends the vineyard and, and uh, Jill grows the peaches. A uh, really great husband and wife team. And Pinot Meunier being a rare varietal seen, uh, grown in Napa, it's typically used for sparkling wine production. Mm. But in this case, as you can see, is a still red wine, really bright aromatic flavors of, of pomegranate, cranberry, hibiscus, and just light on its feet uh, and pr appropriate with a wide spans of different menu items. It's, so, go it's, ahead. It's really interesting. In, in, in Napa, you know, most people are in the wine trade, right? And so a lot of people spend their days making Cabernet. So when they get off work at night, they're mm -hmm. interested in trying something new and fresh. Right. We, we actually, our, our, our biggest secret is that we're a wine bar in the middle of downtown Napa. We don't have a Cabernet by the glass, and this is our top selling wine. People love the lightness, the freshness, the elegance of it. It is excellent. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's been happening in Napa. We all know the, the devastating wildfires have affected so many people, that entire community. What's the rebuilding process like from your perspective and where you guys are from? 
Well, in, first and foremost, we, um, you know, we, Matt and I were lucky that we're in downtown Napa and we were um, far separated from the fires. And the rebuilding is, uh, is just part of a huge community effort that we've seen. A lot of, a lot of uh, locals coming out to support us. And uh, just getting back to Napa, I think, is the, is the most important way to rebuild. It, it, exactly. There are you know, swaths of Napa that you can drive through Soda Canyon down Silverado Trail and you can see the, the burn and it's, it's, it's devastating. I think in a lot of ways, Napa County uh, was uh, fared a little bit better than our, our, our neighbors in Sonoma, which has, has really been hit hard. Uh, but as Ryan said, I think, I think people need to remember that Napa is open for business and that you can still come up and enjoy and the weather and the air is fine. Yeah, I think it's, and it's important to emphasize that you know, they need to, so everyone needs to support the local economy there. I heard so many people right after the wildfire saying, oh, some of these wineries are damaged. I'm going to probably cancel my trip up to Napa. Right. But they need that, Absolutely, that support yeah. these days more well, than it's, ever. And it's a trickle-down effect. You know, if, if, uh, if people stop coming, they stop filling hotel rooms, they stop visiting restaurants, it just goes down the line. Thank you so much for uh, joining us here this morning. If you're planning a trip to Napa, you won't want to miss Compline. Visit ComplineWine.com to check them out. Stick with us because after the break, we have two more guests with an incredible animal sanctuary here in the Bay Area when we come back. <laughs> 